the radioactive radiations are emitted from the nucleus and the three types of radioactive radiations which are emitted out from the nucleus is known as alpha beta and gamma so if you have alpha particle basically alpha particle is also known as a helium nuclei why because alpha particle is a combination or a group of two protons and two neutrons beta is electron so what happen if there is alpha emission uh, that we will discuss in d case but the second question so alpha particle is a sum of uh, two protons and two neutrons so what is beta beta is electron there are two types of beta decays but uh, you are learning only one of them this is called a negative beta decay or electron now my question is that if i draw the atom whenever we draw the atom what we do we draw the nucleus inside the nucleus we have nucleon such as neutron and protons and around the nucleus we are drawing electrons so alpha particle we understand that alpha particle two proton and two neutrons are coming out but beta particle is electron so from where this electron is coming even though we don't see a electron inside the nucleus so how electron is produced even though it is not present but how this electron is emitted so basically what happen how this electron is emitted anyone want or having any idea about this want to share otherwise i like i will explain anyone want to answer this how reactions basically what happen no uh, the electron this electron is from the nucleus this electron is emitted from the nuclear sorry this outer shell electron this is in the orbit but the beta is always emitted from the nucleus so it's not the elect there are electrons outside the nucleus but this electron is specifically emitted out from the nucleus so basically what happen a neutron which is not a fundamental particle it means not a fundamental particle means it can break down into smaller particle so what happen a neutron breaks into proton and electron so one of the proton one of the neutron here for example the neutron here it breaks into what it breaks into proton and electron and that electron is coming out and when this electron is coming out how this neutron break because the particles are continuously colliding with each other because of lack of space due to the lack of space these particles are continuously colliding inside the nucleus so this is a nucleus a nucleus consists of neutron and proton so there are neutrons as well and these particles are not stationary these particles are colliding with each other so as these particles are continuously colliding with each other what it cause it cause the breakdown of a neutron and when this neutron break down what we observe that this neutron break down into proton and electron and this electron when it will go out what we call this electron the electron which is coming out from the nucleus this electron is known as beta so electron is not present in the beginning but it is only produced when there is a breakdown of the neutron it will increase it will increase the number of the proton in not in the shell to break there must be energy from where they will get energy these particles because there is a repulsion so there is a force between them and whenever there is a force there is energy the electrostatic force is there between the proton and neutron also 
there is a force which is called strong nuclear force so that electrostatic repulsion and the strong nuclear force contribute to breakdown of this neutron into proton and electron so what happen when there is a beta decay the proton number increases number of the proton increases so after a beta decay it can emit out more radiation but this is a probability or the chance is there that the neutron can break into proton and electron and we call this as a beta particle is it clear the emission of a beta particle the origin how this beta particle is emitted yes afif sir like the question i'm about to ask it might make no sense but like okay. aren't uh, these neutrons like aren't they supposed to be indivisible like they're the smallest no, no. thing actually you will learn that neutron and proton are not the fundamental particle the only fundamental particle this is extra thing not related to a topic there are 12 fundamental particles one is called a lepton family which include electron electron neutrino tau tau neutrino muon and muon neutrino and there is a quark family which is having up down top bottom charm strange so these are the only fundamental particle there are 12 fundamental particle other than these 12 fundamental particle all are particles which can break down neutron and proton can break even proton is not a fundamental proton can also break down into a particle known as neutron and positron but that is not part of your course that is called a positive beta decay that is why i am not making you confused and going in detail of this the only one decay you are studying you are only uh, learning the breakdown of neutron into proton and electron so there are 12 fundamental particles uh, yes anyone was asking a question any question no sir like thank you very much sir. Okay. thank you so basically as you learn in Uh, like class seven or eight, you learn that proton, neutron, and electron are fundamental particle, but it is not true. Neutron and proton are not fundamental particles. They can break down into further particles. A particle which cannot break down into further smaller particle, that particle is known as fundamental. And there are twelve fundamental particles. one is called a lepton family another one is known as the quark family but that is not included here so you just have to understand the fact that the neutron because of the space lack of space collision between the particle this can leads to breakdown of a neutron into proton and electron and this electron is actually known as a beta particle yes as the number of the proton increase in the nucleus it will not make the nucleus stable a beta decay is not making nucleus too much stable but the thing is that that this can also happen due to the limited space available for the particles so this decay can also happen and what is the gamma a gamma is actually energy it is not a particle it is release when the nucleus is emitting out energy we call that as gamma radiation because what happen like this is a nucleus if the nucleus is stationary what is the initial momentum if nucleus is stationary not moving what is the starting or initial momentum the momentum will be zero because it is not moving now when it emit out alpha particle or beta particle so if alpha particle is moving example towards right so which direction the nucleus should move to conserve the momentum so the nucleus should move towards left 
because it has to conserve the momentum so what happen when the nucleus is moving it releases energy and that energy we call that as gamma so energy it is not the particle it is energy actually emitted from the nucleus which is having a very high frequency and shorter wavelength which is harmful for a human body if it is exposed for even a short term a long term exposure it's very harmful a short term can have acute effects but still it is harmful radiation which is released from the nucleus so three type of particle two type two particles are emitted from the nucleus and one radiation is emitted from the nucleus so gamma or energy is released and it is always associated with the movement of the nucleus so whenever there is alpha decay whenever there is alpha emission there will be a gamma emission whenever there is a beta emission there will be a gamma emission or it might a nucleus is vibrating if a nucleus is vibrating or moving in that case also it emit out gamma so gamma is the energy which is released from the nucleus so these are the three types of radiation alpha beta and gamma alpha and beta are the particle where gamma is the energy which is released from the nucleus so that will not that is only because when the nucleus will have low energy when particles charges atoms have low energy so they they become stable because it is not vibrating too much like for example if you have a container which is filled with say marble <coughs> balls and you are uh, moving it <coughs> if it is completely filled and you are moving it so what happen the glass or the jar might break so same thing happen when the nucleus is releasing energy so it does not vibrate too much so when it does not vibrate it also get stability <coughs> is it clear the concept of these emissions alpha beta and gamma gamma is energy released by the nucleus what happen when a nucleus is emitting out radiation the nucleus move as the nucleus move or the nucleus vibrate it tend to emit out energy because it has to slow down so what have because it cannot go outside the atom so when it slow down it release its energy when it release energy that energy which is released by the nucleus is refers to gamma so there is alpha which is two proton two neutron there is a beta which is called electron and there is a gamma which is energy released from the nucleus is it clear we guess gamma is always there even alpha gamma is that's why like when you have a radioactive source you you find when the nucleus is unstable it is continuously emitting out gamma but gamma is not the particle it is the energy released so you have mostly gamma radiations from the source or continuously gamma radiations are coming out from the source now these dk's because we have alpha beta and gamma so first what happen in alpha dk so what happen in alpha dk i'm just drawing the nucleus say this nucleus contain 84 protons and it contain 144 neutrons okay emit it emit out alpha two protons and two neutrons are released this is the starting the beginning after emission
after emission how many protons will be left because two are released so 82 how many neutrons will be left 142 neutrons will be left now the question is what will be the change atomic number atomic number means number of proton how the atomic number will change when after emission it will increase by 4 or decrease by 4 what number it changes by so atomic number will decrease by 2 and what happened to atomic mass it will decrease atomic mass basically atomic mass is a sum of neutron and proton the total number of proton and neutron so what will be the change in atomic mass it will decrease by 4 why it will decrease by 4 because because there are two proton and two neutron are emitted out yeah the neutron number decreased by 2 but the atomic mass because atomic mass is a sum of neutron and proton that is why atomic number is a number of the proton and atomic mass is a sum of neutron and proton so sum of neutron and proton will decrease by 4 sum of proton will decrease by 2 what will be the change in a proton number so there are two protons are emitted so it will decrease by 2 and what will be it will decrease by 2 as well so if we write a journal equation this is what happen if there is an alpha decay so if we write a journal equation for alpha decay or emission yeah the mass number will be look what is the mass number here the what is a here a is the sum of neutron and proton what is the sum 84 plus 144 84 plus 144 it's 228 what is z here that's 84 but what is a here the sum of neutron and proton that 224 and what is z here that is equals to 82 so you can see that the atomic mass was 228 it become 224 atomic number was 84 it become 82 so mass number decrease by 4 where the atomic number which is the number of the proton decreases by 
So this was minus two, this is minus four. So if we write a general equation for alpha emission, so any element is there represented by symbol X, A is atomic mass, Z is atomic number. It emit out alpha. This is a symbol for alpha. Four in, why four and two? Because alpha is two proton and two neutron. So two proton, two neutron, the mass is four and atomic number two. Because the atomic number change, the so whole element will change. What will be A? A will be minus 4 and Z will be minus 2. Is it clear? Like atomic mass will decrease by 4 and atomic number will decrease by 2. And that is the general equation for any kind of alpha decay. Like, for example, if I say an element X was having uh, 214 or 220 and 86. It emit out alpha. What will be the mass number for element Y? If it is 228, this is 228. Sorry, 220, not 228. This is, I took 220. So this will be 216. And if it is 86, this will become 84. So you should be able to complete the equation for the DK, alpha DK sometime. Uh, you have to complete for reactant side. Sometimes you have to complete for a product side. So this is known as alpha decay. Atomic mass decreases by four and atomic number decreases by two. The second one is a beta decay. A beta decay, like example, you have a nucleus. Um, say it is having uh, 140 neutrons and it is having 92 protons. And it emit out beta. Beta means electron. So how a beta is emitted out? There are 140 neutrons. Out of 140 neutron, one of the neutron example breaks into proton and electron. So this is at the start or the, at the beginning. And after emission, Uh, how many neutrons will be there if 140 so it will be 139 that's right and it will be 93 protons will be there after emission what is a here a means the sum of neutron and proton what is the sum here 140 plus 92 that's equal to 232 so that's equal to 232. So there are 232 nucleon and what is Z here? It's 92. What is A here? 139 plus 93. Neutron number decrease, proton number increase. So the sum will remain same. But Z because the proton number increase, so it will become 93. So now what happened when there's a beta decay, when there's a beta decay, what will happen to neutron number? What happened to a neutron number?
it decreased by one. What happened to proton number? It will increase by one. What happened to atomic number? It will remain same. And what happened to it? Sorry, what happened to atomic number? It increased by uh, one. And what happened to atomic mass it will remain unchanged or it will remain same if we write a journal equation for this decay like we wrote for a journal equation for alpha so we can write for journal equation for beta so for beta decay because first thing the element which is radioactive like element x is a radioactive element a and Z, when it emit out beta, this is a symbol used for beta, zero and minus one, because it does not have any neutron and proton, that's why zero. And it is electron, so charge is minus one. So it turned into A will remain same and Z will increase by one. So if I have an element X uh, with the 150 and 85, it emit out beta. Even you can write this symbol, both are acceptable. You can write electron symbol, like zero and minus one, or you can write beta zero and minus one, both are correct. Uh, what will be the mass here? 150 is there, the original mass. So what will be the mass after emission? That will remain same. And what happened to atomic number? Uh, 85, it will become 86. So this is what happened in a beta decay. In a beta decay, the nucleus is actually, the neutron inside the nucleus break down into proton, electron. There's also another particle which is emitted out. Uh, that is called electron neutrino. But again, that will be in detail when you will why there won't be a charge plus one because what happened? You're saying like because the proton number increases and the neutron number decreases. So the net charge should be plus one. But the thing is, there is there will be a change in electron in the shells as well but you're not taking that in consideration. That's why you're considering it is to be neutral. Basically, practically what happened, there's a term which we call transmutation. This transmutation is not part. You're asking a question, so that's why to clear this idea a transmutation happen. What is a transmutation? How, what is basically a transmutation? <coughs> Look, a neutron breaks into proton and electron. Okay. The proton remain inside the nucleus. So number of the proton, proton are already there, but because of this breakdown of a neutron into proton and electron, this proton number increases. Example, I'm just giving, taking a small, number of electrons to explain the idea. Example, this element was having say four electrons. So first in the two shell and first in, like if I take the numbers, say this was, this was having four protons, four neutrons and four electrons. Reason why I'm taking a small number, so to explain the idea only. One of the proton, one of the neutron breaks into proton and electron. So number of the neutron will become three and number of the proton will become five. 
So three neutron will be there and five proton. And how many electrons are there in right now? There are four electrons. So this should be a charge plus charge. But what happened? This electron, which is emitted out from the nucleus, the it will stop in the shell and it will start to revolve in the shell. So the number of the electron will become five. So what will be the net charge? There will be no net charge on this atom. This is actually what happened. But the transmutation part, you are not studying the transmutation part. You are only studying that what happened inside the nucleus when a neutron breaks into proton and electron. Is it clear? Then the last one is known as a gamma emission. A gamma emission when a gamma is a gamma is actually energy emitted out from the nucleus, so it's not a particle. When the nucleus emit out high energy, high frequency radiation, we call that as gamma. So because there is no particle emitted out, so there is no change in element. Like element is there, x, it remain element x because there is no change in the particle. If it is associated only by the vibration or the movement of the nucleus, and it emit out gamma rays, is it clear? So for gamma, you don't have to like. There is no change in atomic mass. There is no change in atomic number. Only the nucleus is releasing the energy. But gamma is associated whenever there is alpha decay. There will be a gamma decay as well. When there is a beta decay, there will be a gamma decay, and maybe alone it can also have a gamma decay or ga not gamma decay. Basically, gamma emission. Gamma emission is there when the nucleus is moving. So nucleus is moving when there is alpha decay. Nucleus is moving when there is a beta decay, and nucleus sometimes vibrate because of energy. So that is also responsible for gamma emission. So three type of emissions are there: alpha, beta, and gamma. Any doubt in this part? The emissions, the decay equations. Is it clear? Then you have to learn the properties of these radiations. The first property. Is the mass? So, what is the mass of alpha? Alpha is actually it is sum of two protons plus two neutron. Like the mass is the sum of two proton and two neutron. What is beta? The mass of a beta. I'm not writing the exact value, but it's same as the mass of electron. Mass of electron is nine point one one exponent minus thirty one kilogram, and mass of one proton is one point six seven exponent minus twenty seven kilogram. These values, neutron and proton, have the same mass, which is one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen uh, minus twenty seven kg. You don't have to memorize this value. This is just an information. Mass of electron is nine point one one. Into ten to the power minus thirty-one kilogram. So electron is a lighter particle as com because minus thirty-one is a smaller value as compared to minus twenty-seven. So electron is a lighter. Gamma is energy for energy. You don't. That is called a relative mass. When you say one divided by one, uh, one thousand eight hundred and forty, that is a relative mass like compared to 
proton and neutron it is 1 divided by 184 times but that not the actual mass these are the actual masses for gamma it's energy for energy like example if i say what is a mass of light you don't explain or say the mass of a light because for energy you don't define the mass then speed or charge what will be the charge of according to there is a called a wave particle duality theoretically energy can be changed like energy can be changed into mass or mass can be changed to energy but at once you cannot have both state like example something can be a matter or something can be energy but you don't have matter energy together so when we are saying gamma is energy so in that case we cannot say gamma is a matter or it will have a mass because the properties of the matter are different and properties of energies are different like if it is energy then it will correspond to the the parameters related to energy like wave and if it is a mass then if it is a matter then it will have a mass it will have arrangement of the particles the charge will be positive or plus 2 a relative charge charge will be negative and there will be no charge the speed when we compare the speed of alpha particle alpha particle is very slow because there are more mass so approximate speed like the variation is there you don't have a fix you don't have a fixed value for their speed so relatively alpha particles are traveling slower and why they are traveling slower because of their mass but the maximum speed which we can accelerate the alpha particle is 1 over 100 time speed of light a beta particle 1 over 10 times speed of light but that is the maximum speed possible speed which we are able to accelerate and gamma is energy which is speed of light uh, not really you don't have to learn this exact value you don't have to just understand the idea that maximum this is the maximum speed which we are able to accelerate but you don't have to learn these values there is a comparison between them so speed of uh, light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second which one you can think like have a greater range range means the distance traveled by the radiation so which one will have the longest range gamma because of high speed so this will have a long range this will have moderate average and this will have a short range because of their higher speed they will have like cover a greater distance before completely being stopped there are more properties of these radiation but that we will discuss in the next session means tomorrow we'll discuss those properties so i'll continue this explanation of atomic physics maximum it will take three classes maximum it will like tomorrow class and then uh, next week we will finish block 5 only three topics are there radioactivity half life and the nuclear reaction fission and fusion that's it so radioactivity we are almost at the end of radioactivity half life will do tomorrow and nuclear reactions next week any question or a doubt related to the class